Hi, welcome to the episode of Chaotic Torture RC. As you can see here, I have my SCX-10 II. Um, I'm doing an update video from where, in a previous video, I was having some issues where I had broken the uh, pins in the front drive shaft on two different occasions. I'd had a lot of people give me some recommendations and things to do. Um, I could have went that way, I could have went with the MIPs and shaved them down, but that's a lot of money to spend on a shaft and happen to modify it. So what I ended up doing was, earlier when I first started my channel, I was building me a ground pounder from Red Cat, and I had to do the upgrade on the shaft because I was doing the brushless conversion to it. And being Red Cat, I wasn't sure how durable the shafts would be, so I ordered uh, two sets front and rear for it. But I've not had any issues out of the ground pounder with the uh, upgraded shaft, so I went ahead and used my rear one for the front of my truck. I will turn it over and show you what I have here. As you see, it's a, a steel shaft, but it is uh, light. It's been very durable. Um, it's adjustable. I will go ahead and pull this off to show you what I mean when I say it's adjustable. Um, if you go this route for years, I definitely recommend Loctite on it. Um, th this was an, nothing to modify other than I had to drill a hole on the back side here if you want to use the pins to go all the way through. Um, but as you see the shaft itself, it's adjustable, it slides, it's very sturdy and durable. Um, like I said, I'd been running one, well, I'd Loctited those down. I was gonna open it up. It's got a big notch through there on each side that it's like a dog bone in there. So it's got plenty of room to slide, nothing to break, nothing to give. This collar threads on, gives it more bracing. Um, my ground pounder is held up to the uh, Castle Brushless system that I'm running in it. I've taken this out a few times and ran it, took it to the places where I was having issues where I kept breaking the pin here on the uh, stock shafts. This is actually lighter than the stock shaft, surprisingly. I said it was steel. It may be a combination of aluminum, aluminum with a little bit of steel. But regardless, it works. No binding. Super smooth. Um, lock tied it up when you use it. Um, like I said, it's the rear drive shaft for the Red Cat ground pounder. The front drive shaft is too long. It's the, for the upgraded shaft, not the stock shaft from Red Cat and I've been meaning to get videos out sooner but I was having an issue with rendering on my laptop so I went ahead and bought me this stuff and built me another desktop PC I used to have a really nice one lost it in a flood last year and I'm just now recouping some of the things that I've lost so I built a new desktop so I plan to get more videos done get them out quicker and be able to edit better and get them done in a more timely manner but I'm recording outside today because my work area where I'm trying to set everything up to have room for stuff is a complete chaotic mess right now. But anyways, that's just a quick update on that. The next video I'm going to do on this, I'm going to go ahead and there's nothing wrong with the stock shocks. But I got a set of the old RC 4 wheel drive king shocks. I'm going to go ahead and throw them on here. I've got a light switch from one too many RC's that I'm going to put in here to control my uh, light bar up top. I'm going to have my winch controlled from the radio. I've got my HID lights from one too many RC's. Those are going to be controlled from my radio as well. Um, and now that I've got this held up, I may pull this brushed motor out and try a Teakin Rock 412 in it just to see how things handle up. So far my transmission has been holding up great. Axles have been great. The only issue that I had so far to date was snapping the pin that held the uh, the little pin that goes across inside the uh, wild boar shafts. I'd snap two of those pins. Um, I had someone in a video comment ask me about why not use my slipper clutch well where I run at a lot of times I'm on dry areas but I also do drive through some creek as you see a little, little slight little rusting there on some of my hardware 
but everything else that's important I've waterproofed and greased. Uh, I do run into some water occasionally and anybody that's done that knows that when your slipper clutch gets wet all it does is sit and spin so this came with the steel gears and the transmission everything else is steel gears I didn't see no need to run a slipper setup on it so I've got mine cranked down did that attribute to me ripping my front end out yeah I'm sure it did but regardless the fact for my running situation the slipper clutch really isn't much good for me uh, I don't know how many one full-size scale vehicles you see that as they're going up but if something binds their transmissions allow them to slip I run this basically like a full-scale truck would so my red cat shaft it's their upgrade shaft for the ground pounder like I said it's the rear chassis the rear shaft it has been a uh, it's held up really good it's done good with my castle brushless I run the uh, short course brushless setup in my ground pounder and that's got the uh, castle 3600 four pole system I run it on 3s it's been fine I've beat the piss out of it shafts have held up so I don't see any issues with it in this um, on that note I'm gonna go ahead and conclude this video like I said, sorry I haven't got any other videos out more recently. I do have some projects in the works that I will be doing some build videos on, some demo, demo videos with. Uh, thank you all for those that have subscribed to my channel. I appreciate your patience. Um, once I get my new computer completely set up and my work area back, I will be able to produce and get more video, videos out in a timely manner and also in a more professional manner. So thank you for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I've had a few people here leave some rude comments. That's fine. You're welcome to leave them. I do read them. It's just I may not respond, or if I respond, it may not be the response you're looking for because I'm not going to put myself out there to look like a jerk in any way. Everybody's entitled to their opinions. Thank you.